Hi, welcome to this movie about getting started with Vectorworks. We really want to get started quickly, but just before we get started, we do need to start with a blank file. File on the menu bar, new, and create a new blank document. This will just ensure that we don't have any template files going at the moment. You might notice that my page area has changed. So let's first of all set up our units and we'll look at our page printing area. File on the menu bar, document settings, and we'll choose units. We have the ability to draw in millimeters, meters, feet and inches, or centimeters. So choose whichever one suits you. I quite like drawing in millimeters, but not everybody does. Our decimal precision is one whole millimeter. If you're doing an engineering project, you might find that you need to change the precision to make your project accurate. For the work we're doing, one millimeter will be fine. Our areas are square meters and our volume is cubic meters. Click OK to save that. You'll also notice that this area here has got a grid on it and outside this it doesn't have a grid. This represents the edge of the printing area or the page area. File on the menu bar, Page Setup. Here we can choose our printer. In my case I have a A3 printer connected and I can choose A3 as my printer. I'd also like it to be landscape format. Click OK and click OK again. We're just going to have a quick look at our interface. We have our basic creation tools just in this area here. I'm going to use our rectangle tool. We have the ability to change the graphic style of that using our attributes palette and we used to have some other 3D tools down here. Just in this area here we have the ability to change our current view. I'd like you to change to a right isometric view and now we can start drawing. We click to start and we click to finish. This is the most normal way of drawing in Vectorworks. Clicking to start, clicking to stop. Let's try another one. Click again, click again. We also have different ways of drawing rectangles. Just here you can see on our toolbar we have corner to corner, we have the ability to draw a rectangle by its center, we have the ability to draw a rectangle from a center point and an edge, and we also have the ability to draw rotated rectangles. So we can start the angle first and then we can finish the size of the rectangle. So I'd like you to draw some of these rectangles and try out these different ways of drawing. When you've tried that, I'd like you to go to Edit on the menu bar. I'd like you to choose Select All. And then I'd like you to hit the Backspace or the Delete button on your keyboard. This will delete everything. I'd like to draw another rectangle using the first mode. Click to Start. And now we can click to Finish. But just before we click to finish, you may notice that there's a floating data bar. If I hit the tab key once, I can get into the first part of the data bar and I could make that 3m or 3 meters. I could just type three zeros or if I'm lazy, I could just type the letter M. And here we can type 5m and if we hit the enter key once and hit the enter key again, it will create our rectangle for us. So this floating data bar is a fantastic way of controlling the accuracy of the things you create. Let me just do that again. So I click to start, hit the tab key once, I type in 3 meters, hit the tab key once more, 5 meters, hit the enter key once more, hit the enter key again, and now I've created my object. You might notice that when I come back to my object after creating it, my cursor will change shape and the color of it changes red. If I click, I can pull this up and this is instant push-pull. So this allows us to create an extruded object or a box as soon as we create the size of the rectangle. Let's try that again. So click to start, click to finish, click on that and pull that up. Vectorworks also has several snapping opportunities. If we touch the end of an object like this one, we get end point. If we come halfway down, we get a midpoint. And if we come across here, we'll also get a midpoint. 
or a endpoint there. So if we go to our midpoint and click, the second box is half the size or half the height of the first box. I'd like you to delete all of those, please. So we can go right click, choose select all, and then delete. Let's have a look at that again. So let's draw a rectangle. And now I'd like to introduce you to, it's on the 3D modeling tool set just down here, and it's called the push pull tool. The push pull tool will pull objects. So here I've created a rectangle. I can click on that object and I can pull that object up to a height. I can grab a face of that and I can pull that in. Remember my snaps. Pull that face down. Where's my snap? There it is halfway. And I can pull that out whenever I need to. So this is a great way of changing the shapes of your objects. I'm going to try another rectangle. This time I'm going to draw a rectangle from this point up to here. Now just notice when I do that, that different faces of my object turn blue. These are called working planes and they allow us to draw on the face of an object. In this case I'm going to draw from that bottom midpoint there up to that point there. Now when I pull that, Vectorworks will automatically extrude that object. If I bring it into my object halfway, now hold down the option or the Alt key, click once, and it will subtract from that first object. I don't need these two rectangles, so we'll get rid of those. Let's try another tool. Let's try the circle tool. So I click on the circle tool, and I can click on this object here. Remember, I get the blue plane. Click. I pull that halfway in. Remember my snap there. Hold down the option or the Alt key, click once, and that will create a hole. Do the same thing here. Pull that through, this time all the way through. Hold down the option or the Alt key, click once, and it is extruded all the way through. Now my current rendering mode, that's this button up here, is OpenGL. And we also have OpenGL options. Our options are set to low at the moment. Just watch the shape of these circles as I make the changes. So I'm going to change to very high, and you'll see the circles have improved their quality. They're now circular. I can use shadows if I have a light, and that will improve my rendering enormously. I'd like you to delete everything. Right click, select all, and delete. I'd like to draw a building. And we're going to use tools like the rectangle tool, and the push-pull tool to do this. So I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle. Let's click to start, hit the tab key once, 5M, tab key 8M, enter once, enter again, and that finishes our rectangle. When you come back to your rectangle, you can click and you can pull this up, hit the tab key once, and we'll make this 4500, four and a half meters high. We have some options up here fitting to our page area or fitting to an object. If your object is selected, your Vectorworks will zoom so that that object fills the screen. We're going to use our push-pull tool to create a roof on this. I'd like you to select the line tool. Remember we talked about the automatic working plane and we talked about the snaps. So here I have the side of my rectangle highlighted. I can click once, and you'll notice that as I come down, I get the opportunity to come down at 15 degrees or 30 degrees. And I can come out till I touch the edge of my box. Click once. Let's do the same the other side. So click there and come down at 30 degrees and click once more. Just make sure that when you do this, that you don't get the top of the box highlighted in blue. We really want the face of it highlighted in blue. And you can see I just moved my cursor ever such a small amount to make that happen. So you can see I've got 30 degrees, 15, I could have it at 45 degrees, and so on. So 30 degrees, click once. Now back to our push-pull tool. The push-pull tool has three modes. We've used the extruded face mode, 
And now we're going to use the last mode. This is the subface mode. So click on the line and click on our box. You'll now notice that we get different areas that highlight. Make sure you highlight the small area and pull that all the way back till it goes all the way through your model. Let's do that again. So click on that line, click on the box, highlight that area there and pull it all the way through right past the end of your box and it'll cut that edge off. We now have a box and we can now change our view. So we could go to a left view or a right isometric view. And we can also use the flyover tool. This is the flyover tool here. And if you have a mouse that has a wheel button, you can hold the control key down on your keyboard, hold down the wheel button and use that as the flyover tool to fly around your model. I want to create a chimney, so I'm going to create a chimney for this. I'm going to use my polygon tool, that's this tool here, the polygon tool, and I'm going to highlight that face. You can see it's highlighted, so click. I'm going to come up at vertical. There it is there, that's vertical. I want to be about in line with the top of my roof. Click, come out here, click, come down vertically, click again, and back to where I started. And you notice that creates one of these polygon objects, which allows me to extrude it using the instant push-pull. Once I've got that object, which you might think of as a chimney, I can move it around. So I can grab hold of that, and I can move it on my roof until it's where I would like it to be. If I wanted to create a chimney pot for that, I should use my control middle mouse wheel button to change my flyover and then I could create a circle on the top and I could extrude that just a little bit. Remember if you hit the tab key you can type the exact distance in. So back to our flyover tool and there we are. And we're going to create a building so we want this building to have an empty middle to it. You notice at the moment it's a completely solid object. We have a tool here called the Shell Solid Tool. Select the Shell Solid Tool, change the thickness to 200 millimeters, and click on the bottom of our object. So when we click on the bottom and hit the Enter key, Vectorworks will take the entire inside of our model out, leaving us with a hollow building. So now we can put some doors in. Now it's time to put in a door. I'm going to go back to my rectangle tool. Remember to highlight the correct face. If you want to put the door on that side, we can. If you want to put the door on the side. And we're going to start along the bottom edge. So when we can see the word object, that tells us that we're running along the bottom edge. But we also need to see that blue color. So when you've got them both, click. Hit the tab key once. We want our door to be about 900 millimeters wide. Hit the tab key. Two meters high. Enter once, enter again. So that's created a rectangle and we can extrude this. Now we can use the same trick that we used earlier on, that is we can pull it slightly, make sure it goes into the building, more than 200 millimeters, hold the option key down and click once, and that'll make a hole for our door. Touch that point there, and we're going to run along, click, and we're going to make a window. Click, we can pull that through, Again, I like to pull it through just a little bit. Option key down, or Alt key, click, and that'll make a hole. Now this line back here, this is the back of our building, so just be aware of that. We haven't got a floor for our building yet, so we need to use our rectangle tool to create a floor. The easiest way to create it to the underside of the floor is to change our view. We have one like our lower right isometric view so we can see the underside of our building. We can click there, click down here, click and pull this down. Don't forget to hit the tab key and we're going to make this 300 millimeters thick. And that gives us our slab. Back to our flyover tool. Remember we're going to use our control key and our middle mouse wheel button 
and now we can start to create things like our door details and our window details. A step would be a nice addition to our building, so we're going to click there, touch that corner of the door, click there, and then we can create a step. Don't forget the push-pull tool. The push-pull tool will allow us, particularly if we change to the first mode, to grab that step and bring it halfway down. I think it would be nice if we had a door frame that went around there, so I'm going to use this tool here with a separation of 200 millimeters. Now this tool is called the double polygon tool. If I highlight the face of my building, click there, I can come up to that corner, click, that corner, click, I can come down to here, or we'll stop there, click once, click again, that creates an object. Now you'll notice that I don't get the instant push-pull with this particular tool. So back to our push-pull. Don't forget to check the extrude mode and we can pull this out by a specific distance. We might want to make this come out halfway to there. And if we look at this at the underside, what we might want to do is to pull that down. So with our push-pull tool, we can grab that and pull it down to there. Just change our view slightly and that face can come down to there. So there's my building starting to come together. We can do the same thing with the window if you like, but that is a very quick introduction to getting started with Vectorworks. Practice those things. We'll be using these techniques a lot.